to explain the part two of your d double indicator titration. Here, it's a different scenario. If the first one is not exposed to the atmosphere, the second one is there is exposure to atmosphere by your sodium hydroxide and it becomes your sodium carbonate. Okay, what happens here? Again, you have your sodium hydroxide just to give you the chemical reaction involved. If you exposed it to air, your air atmosphere contains carbon dioxide, right? And in this process here, remember you're not adding any acid at first, it's just atmosphere. It becomes your sodium carbonate. And so what really happens when you perform your titration setup is this one. You have your conical flask, you have your burette, and you have here your sample. Your sample is pure NaOH. Remember, it's not a mixture, just your sodium hydroxide. But as you titrate it with your acid, in this case, it's one, um, one end of your sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Okay, it's H2SO4. Do you want me to make it HCl to be consistent with the previous question? I think it's better that way so that you can compare what's really happening. So let's still make it HCl like this one. It's still hydrochloric acid. So for consistency, so that you can see the difference between them clearly. Let's change your acid from sulfuric acid to hydrochloric acid. It's easier that way. Again, in this case, it's one normality. And you still have the same indicators, phenolphthalein and your methyl orange endpoint. So again, what is happening here is you have your NaOH sample dissolved in water, if that's your solvent. And as you titrate it with your acid, portion of it is exposed to air. So you have your carbon dioxide here. It's exposed to air. And a portion of this exposed to the gas, the carbon dioxide gas, becomes your sodium carbonate here sodium carbonate. So you can imagine a portion of it being exposed to carbon dioxide forms your sodium carbonate, right? Now, how do you know this is what's happening? How can you tell? It's easy. In the question, determine the total alkalinity and the sodium carbonate content. It will therefore tell you where is this sodium carbonate coming from and you, and you obviously see there's only one chemical. Therefore, the only way for it to be produced in the question is there's exposure to air. I hope that makes sense. All right, now that we're clear with that, what is really happening is still the same. As you titrate it with the first quantity of your HCl, in this case, it's 21.7. No, it's not 21, it's 20.80, my bad. You have your zero mark here. You open the stopcock and you consume the first volume here it says here it's 20.80 let's write that down for the volume of phenolphthalein endpoint you consume 20.80 ml there it's there now after seeing the endpoint again for phenolphthalein remember from a very basic you add your hcl you add your HCl here, it becomes less basic, right? Because you're adding acid to your strong base, it becomes neutralized. And therefore, your phenolphthalein will appear pink from basic to acidic colorless. So the endpoint that you want to wait uh, or expect would be a colorless solution. When you see the colorless solution, you add your second titrator uh, sorry, indicator, your methyl orange. And then you add more acid until you see the end point, which is this time from yellow to pink. So if you see the pink, you have to stop. That's the end of your titration. Gets? Now, in this case, the second addition is 21.75. So for us to be clear about that, let's use a different color. You keep on adding your acid and here in the question you are given the burette 
reading. So when you read this one, there's numbers there, there's lines. The first stop is 20.80. The second stop is 21.75. So therefore, you don't have to take the 21.75 as your volume for methyl orange, okay? It's actually the difference. Because if this is your 20.80 mark, and this is your 21.75 mark, it would mean the volume here, the difference between them, that's the volume for your methyl orange endpoint. Therefore, if you want, right, if you want to get it, isolate that one, you will have to subtract your 20.80 from your 21.75. So here, what you're actually adding is 0.95 ml. The second addition is this one. The difference from the reading here and the reading there. So 21.75 minus 20.80 gives you 0.95 ml. Okay, now we're clear with that. Let's go back to your reaction. The first addition of HCl, which is 20.80, that's your phenolphthalein endpoint. Again, if you have phenolphthalein endpoint, there is formation of sodium bicarb. And since it's a strong acid, it will first attack the strong base to fully neutralize it to its salt. Right? It's still the same here. And again, it's still the same for your sodium carbonate. It will become your sodium bicarb. Right? And here, this is the volume covered by your 20.80. Your phenolphthalein endpoint up to this bit. Now, when you, fir when you first add that, there's a color change. You add your methyl orange. Again, waiting for another endpoint. This time, that endpoint is actually this part. From your sodium bicarb, another half neutralization, giving you your neutral salt. If you don't understand those terms, you have to go back to my first video. So again, for summary, this is a strong base. And this is your neutral salt. This is a full or complete neutralization from a strong base going to your neutral salt. This one is half neutralization. And this is another half of it on the bottom. At this point, it's already complete. Let's label it again. This is half neutralization. Why half neutralization? From a weakly basic salt, it becomes weaker but it's still a base, so it's just half neutralization. When the weak base becomes a fully neutralized salt, then that's what you call your complete neutralization, or full neutralization. Let's, let's, use, the, let's use the word complete. Okay, so the volume that you need to, for you to achieve this one is this 0.95, 0.95. Again, if this is 0.95, it would mean that the upper portion, just this part here, is also 0.95. Always identical. This lower portion and upper portion are always identical. So now, if you want to look for the percent of your sodium carbonate content, the volume that you will use is therefore 0.95 plus 0.95. So let's write it down here. Percent purity of your sodium carbonate content would be equal to your volume, which is 0.95 times 2, giving you 1.9. 1.9 ml times the normality, which is 1 by your acid. 1 normality, HCl, times your MEQ. Again, whatever purity you're looking for, the MEQ of that substance is the one you're using, you're gonna use, okay? So here we have your, can we just borrow the, the values here? 106. So it's 106, that's the molecular weight. Molecular weight divided by the number of equivalents. 2 times 1 is 2 times 1000 since it's in milli equivalents. Divided by the weight, which is, again, it should be in grams. 
So convert it to grams by moving the decimal place to the left three times. That becomes 9654 grams, right? And then times 100. This will now give you 100. So let's just solve it together if you want. Grab a calculator. So the number here is 10.43%, right? Let me double check just to be sure. Okay, so it's indeed 10.43. Now, you have this another question, total alkalinity. If you see the word total alkalinity, it means everything from its mother compound. So what is the mother compound? What's the mother base? Alkali, basic. It's your sodium hydroxide. Remember, everything that you see is coming from this alone. It's a standalone chemical and it was just converted due to exposure to carbon dioxide. So when you are to determine the total alkalinity, this actually pertains to your sodium hydroxide. Okay, remember that. Since everything comes from this, it will therefore be the starting point, total alkalinity. So for that, let's um, try to consider what the volume is for your percent NaOH. Again, if everything here that's the first volume is 20.80 and you and this bit here is 0.95 and you're solving for percent NaOH which is the total alkalinity you should therefore get the total volume since this one resorts or results to NaCl and at the same time it just converts because of exposure to carbon dioxide if you think about it, it's still, this salt here is still coming from your sodium hydroxide. So total alkalinity, therefore, will be all the volume needed from your NaOH here going to this path. And when it becomes sodium carbonate, going to the full neutral salt NaCl. So therefore, here, the volume that you will be using is 20.80 the first here and the bottom 0.95 ml right so that's the total volume total volume if you want you can just use directly 21.75 since that's everything that you consume but i just want to show you how we come up with the total volume if you look at this diagram so now that you get that one you just have to continue with your normality And the MEQ for your sodium hydroxide, again, you get that by dividing the molecular weight by 1, 1 hydroxide, 1N times 1,000. All of them divide by the weight in grams, always in grams, 9654 grams. Never forget, since it's in percentage, you still have to multiply this by 100 later on, okay? The entire of this, you have to multiply by 100. So let's do it together. We have 21.75 times 1 times 0 0.040 divided by 0 0.9654 times 100. You get a number 90.5. 12%. Therefore, the final answer here is for total alkalinity, that's 90.12. And for your sodium carbonate content, it's 10.43. If you want to see the third scenario, just watch the third video. And it's still part of this entire discussion.